As a cancer dietitian, I want to share with you about alcohol increasing cancer risk. First off, these are the cancers that you're going to be increasing at any consumption of any type of alcohol. That also includes red wine. A lot of people will think that red wine is going to give you antioxidants. No grapes give you resveratrol. Red wine is going to provide you with ethanol, which is a carcinogen, which will increase your cancer risk. Unfortunately, alcohol is not a well-known carcinogen to many people. About half Americans have no idea that alcohol increases cancer risk. Each year, about 6% of cancer diagnoses are from alcohol. In fact, I want to show you that you're going to increase your cancer risk of these cancers this much when you're consuming alcohol, any type of alcohol. Now let's talk about how they come up with that risk number and percentage. So cancer risk is expressed in two ways, relative risk and absolute risk. Absolute risk refers to the probability of getting a cancer during a certain time period, like a time frame, like within the next year, the next five years, or like by the age of like 50 or 70. But one type of absolute risk would be like lifetime risk. So for example, a man, an American man of developing prostate cancer in his lifetime is about 13%. That's an example of absolute risk. When I'm talking about alcohol, I'm talking now about relative risk. It's different from absolute risk. Relative risk gives you a comparison or ratio. It shows the strength of a relationship between a certain risk factor and a specific type of cancer. So what we're talking here now is the risk factor of drinking alcohol and develop these certain different types of cancers. When you hear about relative risk, there's no limit to the increase in percentage of risk. That's why you're seeing these levels right here. So most people will think like 100% increased risk is the highest amount of risk, but with relative risk, that's not true. So a relative risk of 100% means you're two times higher to get at risk because of the risk factor that you're doing, like drinking alcohol. You're now twice as high, twice as likely to get the cancer from alcohol than that person who's not drinking. Okay. And that's just at hundred percent, 200%. Now you're three times as likely to get those cancers because you're consuming that alcohol, that risk factor, whereas this person over here is not drinking alcohol they don't have that risk factor. They don't have three times the chance, the likeliness of getting it. But you over here with 200%, yeah, now you're increasing your risk. Also, it's important to note the information that I'm sharing to you is from the World Cancer Research Fund, where they're looking at very large groups of people that are very well-defined groups, okay? It's not like subtle little things that might increase cancer risk. They're looking at, you know, like sun exposure, processed meats, alcohol smoking, things that, you know, they're able to look at with very large groups of people and come up with these statistics. What that's going to look like is researchers are keeping track of these, you know, large groups of people for several years not changing their lifestyle factors and seeing you know based on whatever they're naturally deciding to do in their life their increased risk of cancer and these numbers and statistics can be frustrating because you can do all the right things to get cancer and you can see someone over there drinking all the alcohol and smoking all the cigarettes and they never get cancer you know and cancer is so individual it's, it's unlucky it's individual genetics are involved there's so many different things that are involved in why you get a cancer diagnosis my page and what i'm doing here is just sharing with you hey these are all the things that we can control that we can do our best to help support our body's day-to-day -day function to reduce that damage you know having more plant foods taking out tobacco you know lowering fat tissue you know making sure to move more and then also this post is all about removing alcohol so the more you remove the alcohol it's going to be helpful if you drink for a lot over the course of the years yes it's going to improve your body once you remove alcohol but it's best to start to remove alcohol as soon as possible because then it will as soon as possible start to reduce your risk of those six different cancers as a cancer dietitian i have my own private practice i support cancer survivors or adults that want to reduce cancer risk in my one-on-one -on -one coaching program so if you want to learn ways to reduce alcohol and other ways to reduce cancer risk and build that cancer prevention lifestyle make sure you link in my bio and apply to one-on-one -on -one coaching